now have freedom. Ghana, land of freedom. Toils of the brave and the sweat of their labors. Toils of the brave which have brought freedom. So, what is the problem about the Daniel Domilevo matter? The main concern about civil society is that there's some corruption one way or the other about it because they say that Daniel Domilevo is a watchdog of society. He is there as the personification of checks and balances and of the state, especially concerning money. The Auditor General is the main person who has the power of checks and balances concerning the way the money of the government is spent. When money of the government is spent in a certain way, and the government means the people of Ghana, when that money is spent in a certain way that is not correct, the Auditor General will make a report to Parliament, and Parliament will deal with it. And time and time again, the Auditor General has made reports to Parliament. We now know from the courts that the Auditor General, when he makes the report to Parliament, is able to surcharge. Particularly, district chief executive have all been surcharged. The National Health Insurance have been surcharged. They have challenged it in court. And when you are surcharged by the Auditor General, this is a democracy. You can challenge the Auditor General surcharging in court. And we know recently the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the Justpon Group that the Auditor General did not have power to surcharge them, even though he purportedly did. So, so that's the Auditor General. He has, he has a, a role to play. There's no doubt about that. And he has a job to do. And when he finds something that's untoward, the Auditor General is able to surcharge and he's able to present the document to Parliament. So under no circumstance would the Auditor General find something that he cannot talk about. There are procedures that he has to obey. When he finds something, he goes to Parliament and, or he can publish a surcharge. So we don't have a crisis of corruption as far as the Auditor General is concerned. What is the problem with Daniel Domlevo as an individual and Daniel Domlevo as an auditor relating to the government of, of President Akufuado? Now, civil society talk of corruption, and that has been said so many times that people have not even looked at the foundation of Daniel Domlevo's appointment, and that's our starting point tonight. Because our claim tonight is that if there is any corruption related to the relationship between Daniel Domlevo and the Akufuado administration, then that corruption has a preamble, and we are going to bring out that preamble because it surprises us that civil society never talk about that. Civil society never ever talk about the circumstances surrounding the appointment of Daniel Domlevo. And I'm going to go very hard and direct because I'm going to begin with the Constitution and lead you to the point of Daniel Domlevo's appointment and ask civil society whether we should continue as a country in that regard. Now, this is the 1992 Constitution I have before me here. And it has a preamble. A preamble to a Constitution fundamentally lays out what the people want to do with themselves what they want to do with the constitution that they put out. So the preamble lays out the issue of the constitution. And this is my most important point. The principle that all powers of government spring from the sovereign will of the people. All powers of government, and that's very important. This is the most important part. All powers of government spring from the sovereign will of the people of Ghana. All the powers of the government of Ghana spring from the sovereign will of the people of Ghana. The principle of universal adult suffrage by which we vote, the rule of law, the protection and preservation of fundamental human rights and freedoms, unity and stability for all our nation. So I want to go away and it says do, do hereby adopt, enact and give to ourselves this constitution. It says the principle that underpins the constitution is that all powers of government spring from the people. That is emphasized in Article 1, the first article of the Constitution, Article 1. Now look at Article 1. Article 1 says that the sovereignty of Ghana resides in the people of Ghana, in whose name and for whose welfare the powers of government are to be exercised in the manner and within the limits laid down in this Constitution. Then two of it says that the Constitution shall be the supreme law of Ghana, and any other law found to be inconsistent with any provision of this Constitution shall, to the extent of the inconsistency, be null and void. Let's focus on one. The sovereignty of Ghana resides in the people of Ghana, in whose name and for whose welfare the powers of government are to be exercised. In whose name and for whose welfare. In whose name and for whose welfare. So... The people of Ghana hold the power, and that power is given to the government. 
particularly the executive, because it is only the president and maybe the vice president, but the president, who is directly elected by the people. Members of parliament are elected by their various constituencies, and together they form the legislature. Members of the courts are not even elected. The president, in exercise of the power given to him by the people, appoints the judiciary. That's how powerful the president is. Because the president is the only one who is directly elected by the people. And he needs to be elected by a majority of the people, 50% plus one, before he's president of Ghana, before the social contract between the people of Ghana and that president kicks in. He must have obtained their mandate. And when he obtains that mandate, he exercises his authority for them and on their behalf. I want that to be clear. So I hope civil society is listening. If they are not listening, tell them. This is how they should begin the analysis. When we are talking about Dom Levo still, don't get lost. When we land, you will see. The president of Ghana collects a mandate from the people by campaigning. He doesn't force the people. He campaigns. He sells ideas to them. Says, I can do this if you make me the president. Why must we have a president? Because of the social contract. The social contract says that all of us, in an inalienable rights, we give our power to one person, and he exercises on our behalf every four years. And every four years, the person who has exercised that goes back to the people, if he hasn't done two terms, to ask for another mandate, to ask for a renewed mandate. That's very important. So we, we don't want to do personalities, but because it's president, we have to mention names. John Dramani Mahama, president of Ghana, he exercises the power of president, because the people have given him that power. J. A. Kufuad, Mills, Rawlings, Akufuado, they all exercise the power of government because the people have given them the power. And it's there. It's, 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 it's like that. So as far as the spirit of the Constitution is concerned, and, and, and listen to this because the spirit of the Constitution and the letter of the Constitution together form the Constitution. As they say in law, the Constitution is a living organism. There's a spirit behind the Constitution. So, and there's a letter behind the Constitution. The letter is what we read. The spirit is the principles that underpin the Constitution. That's the spirit. And I can give you a quick example. So if, for instance, there's curfew, you know, there's curfew. And then um, you are late for curfew by two minutes. In terms of the letter and you are entering your house, by the time you get to your porch, it's two minutes more before the curfew. You have violated the law because you are not in the house. That's the letter of the, of the, of the Constitution or the letter of the law. The spirit of the law is that you were on your way home. So you really haven't violated it. You know, that's the spirit. The spirit of the constitution says something is wrong about something. We cannot put a finger on it, but it is wrong. That's the spirit of the law. And judges all the time work hard to make obeisance to the spirit of the law. Our contention is that when a president takes office, John Dramani Mahama sworn into office on 7 January uh, uh, 2013, President of the Republic of Ghana. He has a four-year mandate by the letter. His mandate actually ends on the 6th of January 2017. That's when John Mohammed's mandate ends. But he's a first-term president. And he goes into office. And I'm point civil society, this is the corruption you should be dealing with. If, does, if Don, Daniel Domelevo's situation is corruption, we have a major issue we need to discuss, whether that's how we want to go on as a country. So John Dramani Mahama presents himself in 2016 to renew the social contract with the people on 7 December 2016. By 10th December 2016, we are told that the mandate of John Mahama has been withdrawn by the people. They have given that mandate to Nana Kufuado. They have withdrawn the mandate from John Mahama. John Mahama's mandate has ended. The consent of the people that John Mahama should exercise their power has been withdrawn from the ballot box by the ballot box and announced by the Electoral Commission on 10 December. This announcement by Charlotte Oseg should have told everyone and does tell everyone and that even speak to the, the fact right now that the people of Ghana had withdrawn the social contract from John Mahama. Listen to Charlotte. Mr. John Dramani Mahama of the NDC had 4 million 713,277 votes, being 44.40%. Mr. Nana Akufado of the New Patriotic Party had 5,716,026 votes, being 53.85%. On the basis of the foregoing figures, and by the power vested in me as the chairperson of the Electoral Commission and the returning officer for the presidential election, it is my duty and my privilege to declare Nana Adodankwa Akufuado as a president-elect of the Republic of Ghana. Thank you, greater and stronger. 
That announcement by Madame Charlotte Osei on the 10th of December 2016 is a clear indication that the Ghanaian people had withdrawn the power and the authority and the social contract from John Mahama. Remember, the Constitution's preamble says the power springs from the will of the people. The power to govern it springs from the will of the people. Civil society have not noticed that. And it's shocking. That, is that how we want to continue our society? Is that we have another president comes in, he loses election and he runs around. IGP appoints a new IGP, appoints a new CDS, appoints a new chief justice if there's opportunity, appoints everyone. Is that what we want to do? We cannot do that. So on the 10th of December, the, the, the mandate of John Mahama is withdrawn. The concern of civil society should be how do we manage our situation? Because we know that in 2009, Dr. Tony Edu, working as a, a member of the transition team of Professor J.E. Mills, canceled several appointments that had made by, been made by President Kufo, particularly at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, on the philosophical basis that the spirit of the Constitution had withdrawn the mandates from the MPP administration. That's the point Tony Edu made. More than 30, maybe more than 100 appointments to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs was withdrawn by Tony Edu sitting as a member of Professor Mills' transition team. And the point he made is that how can you lose elections and after losing the elections, exercising the authority of the people to make appointments? That was correct. Because the spirit of the constitution is offended. When, in the case of President Kufo, you can even say that. The mandate was lost by his party. He was not on the ballot. He had done his two terms. The mandate was lost by his party. His party had sought the mandate and he didn't get it. Even that, Dr. Tony Edu felt, and rightly so, that certain appointments shouldn't be made at the end of the day. The only thing they, they do in America is that you can take some people out of prison, you can give them clemency, you can do some soft, soft things. You can name a street, you can do a few things. But you cannot make fundamental appointments that have an impact on the next administration because the people of Ghana have withdrawn your mandate and making appointments of the Auditor General is significant. And it is an exercise of the mandates of the people. It is an expression of the sovereign will of the people. How, why should the president do that when the mandate has been withdrawn? This is the question I'm asking. And you heard Daniel Domlevo talk about having a call with Nana Kufuado and, um, and he uh, talking to him at the time that he was president-elect and at the time that he had been appointed. I'll come to that in a minute. And, and Domlevo made that point at Christ the King. But the concern I have tonight is not even about Domlevo. I'm not about that. I'm about civil society and their inability to see a major issue about how we govern our country. That relates to the Domlevo story. That is the beginning and foundation of the Domlevo story. Why did President Mahama exercise an authority whose spirit had been withdrawn from him? Let's go and read this letter. It's a letter that is dated 13th of December. Three clear days after the withdrawal of the mandate from the president. It says, H.E., the president has nominated Mr. Daniel Domelevo to replace Dr. Felix Kwame Ave as Auditor General and will appreciate the opinion of the Council of States thereon. The change is as a result of some unforeseen developments. Very interesting. Kindly lay the request before the Council of States for consideration and communicate the decision for the attention of H.E. the president. The inconvenience caused by the change is very much regretted. Mr. Daniel Domlevo's curriculum vitae is attached, it's signed by Julius Debra, and is written to the secretary to the Council of States. Okay, let's look at the controversial part. Something is in there, second paragraph. The change is as a result of unforeseen circumstances. So there was a Mr. Dr. Felix Kwame Ave, who was probably the original appointment. Rumor has said that Dr. Kwame Ave was of the view that, given the situation, he wanted a new president to come and make the appointment. That's a rumor. We can't rely on that. But that's a rumor that Dr. Kwame Ave was of the view that, look, this is not the time to appoint an Auditor General. When the mandate of the people has been withdrawn, I don't want to do that. Let a new president come and then deal with it. Okay, so apparently... That unforeseen development is that. That is it. That somebody said, no, hold on, I'm not sure. And then Dom Levo was recommended for appointment three days clear after a mandate has been redrawn by the people in an election in a major way. Three days clear. The question for civil society, the first and major question is, should we have a look at that? Should we amend the Transition Act? so that our president should not be existing 
existing presidents, especially those who have presented themselves for election and have failed to renew their mandate, should they be able to make fundamental appointments as the Auditor General, as the Chief Justice, Inspector General of Police, the Military Commander, Navy Commander, Chief of Defense Staff, several ambassadors of, of the country, several major appointments, should they be able to do that? Let's go on. There's another letter that comes from the Council of State. The Council of State, withdraw, they reply, okay, re appointment of Auditor General, and that's from the Council of State. And it says, please refer to your correspondence of 13 December 2016. And that's written on the 19th of December. 19th of December. It says, please refer to your correspondence of the 13th of December 2016 on the above subject matter. Council, at its meeting held on Monday, the 19th of December 2016, considered and endorsed the nomination of Mr. Daniel Domilevo for appointment as Auditor General to replace the earlier nomination. Did you hear that? Council of State, there had been an earlier nomination. What happened to that nomination? Why did the nominee say he doesn't want it? Was the nominee speaking the language we are speaking tonight? That sovereignty springs from the will of the people and so when the people have withdrawn their mandate you shouldn't get in is that what the nominee said dr felix kwame ave we think that this matter is fundamental it's pivotal to the whole conversation about whether dom level should go and leave whether he's fighting with the board chairman whether he has written to the chief of staff whether he says when i'm going on leave nobody should replace me all of that we talked about obama talking about strong institutions and they said we shouldn't talk about that because Dom Level would have ended in June anyway. If Dom Level didn't retire last week, he would have been there till June and he's gone. When Dom Level goes, what happens? Did anybody think about that? We have to set standards for, for building this country. And they talk about strong men, that Obama was wrong. We have heard for the first time that in 2009, when Obama came to the conference center and made that speech that went around the world, that Africa must look for strong institutions, not strong men. He was applauded. When the Dom Level matter came, he raised this. Civil society said Obama was wrong. Really? We should look for strong men. When they die, what do we do? When they are sick, what do we do? When, when they can't work anymore, what do we do? When they have psychological problems and they can't work, what do we do? Strong men will never survive. It is like the difference between uh, idealism and pragmatism. Pragmatists always win. Strong men will never survive. Strong institutions will survive forever. Yes, strong men build institutions, but civil society and the law can build institutions. And that's why we should look at things like that. Should people be, be appointing People, when they, the mandate has been withdrawn, Dom Level said yesterday that after he was appointed, on the, after the 19th, he got a call uh, from the phone of the uh, Minister for Energy, uh, Matthew Poku Prempe, and he said, I hold on for the President-elect. President-elect Akufado spoke to him and said that, Mr. Dom Level, you're okay. Good to see you. Do your work. Do your work. And he was encouraged by that. We are guessing that the reason why President Akufado had to make that call, that there may have been voices around him who are saying that, look, you cannot come into office with this Auditor General appointed by somebody whose mandate has been withdrawn. And if you know President Akufuado, he's, he's a constitutional type of person. I mean, those of us who support him, we support him because we covered him in the second parliament. And if you see Akufuado in the second parliament, you would understand that of the politicians of his generation, if you're going to pick one who thinks about Ghana, one who has the Ghana project's rights in his face, one who wants to make a significant change in Ghana, it was the member of parliament from, from Abu Akwa. It, it was very easy to tell. All of us who covered the second parliament, all the students around of the day, was very easy to tell that when you look at his, his parliamentary work, the kind of interventions he made on the floor of the house, as a, a, a chairman of the Committee of Subsidiary Legislation, which is led by the opposition, as an opposition member of parliament, you would understand that the man has the Ghana project with him. So it's not surprising that we are hearing that he may have told some of his people that it doesn't matter. I mean, we are all Ghanaians. Let him do his work. I'm, I'm not surprised at all. And he had to put that call through to him to assure him that in spite of the fact that you have appointed in a certain way, that, is, that circumstances brings up some conversations about sovereignty of the people, it doesn't matter, you can go on. Dom Levo himself said that, that Akufado said he can go on. So civil society should hear that right at the outset, Akufado had no problem with him. But there will be problems with people if people allow themselves to be used in a certain way. There will always be problems. So I don't want to hear that uh, Dom Levo is being victimized and, and uh, he said that his age was not, his leave was not due. He himself said that his leave had been underrated. Dom Levo himself said that the number of days for his leave had been underrated. And the office said that, okay, then take the rest. 
So he took the rest. He came back and they said, well, we found something else. We found that your age has been changed in a way that might even be a police matter. So when they say Dom Level is being victimized, why did he go and change his age? Am I the one who changed the age? If they, when you, and I said it there last time, when you are changing your age or you are changing any important information about yourself, you swear an affidavit. Without an affidavit, you have done the wrong thing. It's forgery. You can't do that. And when they catch you, you say it's victimization. But do you know how many times they've tried to victimize us sitting here for 20 years? They do it all the time. But you have to be sure that you are doing the right thing at the back. You can't come and scream hoarse and shout and be doing the wrong thing at the back. You can't do that. If you do that, then who, he who lives in a glass house, you, you, don't, you don't throw stones, right? But that's not even my concern tonight. My concern tonight is civil society and the preamble. And the issue about, so young people should know that all you need to do is to be friends with civil society. If you change your age, it doesn't matter. If you are appointed in some circumstances, it doesn't matter. Just be friends with civil society. Is that all? And civil society tonight is calling Akufado names. I heard that yesterday, civil society, calling Akufado names about corruption. What is the single corruption event that Dom Lebo found? Where is it? He should publish it. He should surcharge the people. He should tell parliament. That's the work Dom Lebo does. This gossiping and whispering that they used to do. Then at a close of day, they all gather in Dom Lebo's office. And he's telling him, hmm, I called the minister of finance, so he didn't even pick the call. That's rubbish. Documents are being done by Dom Lebo, and then it ends up in the media. And investigative journalists have it, and they are publishing it. That's gossiping. Where is the single corruption event that Dom Lebo found against the government? He should publish it. And if he publishes it, it will be challenging court. We run a democratic republic. Civil society cannot just stand up and say that Dom Levo is being hounded. What is the evidence of it? Because he went to his office and he told you that his office had been locked and the padlock has been changed. But he's on leave. <laughs> if you're on leave, what are you going to do there? When they started investigating him, they found that he has to pay some money. Civil society went silent about it. Is that how we want to build our society? The chickens will come home to roost one day, civil society. The chickens will come home to roost. And you got to deal with it. 2020 selections were fought. Dom Levo's matter was pushed by civil society to the forefront of the election. Martin Amidu's matter was driven by civil society to the forefront of the election. The so-called issues of corruption and mother serpent and all of this unprintable language that was used against the candidate, uh, the incumbent candidate, was pushed at the forefront of the election. It was. Well, how did the Ghanaian people respond? Have we forgotten how the Ghanaian people respond? You go to the election of 7 December. The Ghanaian people retain Akufuado with a heavy mandate. You, you haven't noticed? You think the Ghanaian people are interested in gossip? No, they are interested in development. Akufuado is not perfect. No president is perfect. But here is a president that the Ghanaian people recognize that he has come into office and he has delivered a policy that affect the 1.2 million children who were educated so that tomorrow we can have many and better civil societies. They, they are not Akufado's relatives. He doesn't know them. But he created a policy that educated 1.2 million Ghanaians who would not have been educated. The Ghanaian people recognized that. And in spite of everything that was done, look at a place like Central Region. You went to Central Region. So much was said. The, new, the, the National Democratic Congress dissipated the MPP in the Central Region. They took almost all the seats of parliament away from the MPP. The people of Central Region retained Akufuado with a lead of 100,000 in the Central Region. That should tell civil society, so civil society, are you listening? People want politicians who can deliver. People are interested in politicians who can deliver. They don't want gossip and whisperings sitting in Christ the King. They don't want that. They don't want lectures and whisperings. And they want a president who can deliver. They want a constitution, the fundamental law of the land that works. They want a constitution that works. They want a civil society that is speaking to the constitution and telling the president that you have violated the constitution. Change this, change that. Let's move on. Not whispering, coalescing around an individual and whispering and gossiping and assuming that there's some corruption in your own heads. And you go to the election with it, the Ghanaian people return the heavy verdict. That's how Kufado was sworn in. The name of the Almighty God swear. Do in the name of the Almighty God swear. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Republic of Ghana. To the Republic of Ghana. As by law established. As by law established. That I will uphold 
that I will uphold the sovereignty and integrity of Ghana. The sovereignty and integrity of Ghana. And that I will preserve. And that I will preserve. Protect. Protect. And defend. And defend. The Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. The Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. So help me God. So help me God. We have been around for a very long time, gentlemen and ladies. We've been around for a very long time. So we understand, we know what has happened. Some of these civil societies, when they started, we were right there with them, giving them interviews to make their name popular and bringing them on programs like this so people will hear about them. So we know them. And when these things happen, it can get quite, quite something. Anyway, civil society, let's discuss it. What is the future of our country? When a, a mandate is withdrawn from a president, should that president make appointments by going and nominating council of state, changing, nominating, shopping, and changing, making appointments? And when you are an auditor general, you are accountant general, you are an electoral commissioner, and all those constitutionally appointed institutions, please desist from gossiping and whispering. It's baseless. It doesn't, it doesn't add up to anything. The, the corruption is in your head. It, it's, not, it's not anywhere. What has Akufado done wrong so far? He sent them level on leave. He has power to do so. Anybody who feels he hasn't power to do so, you can challenge it in the, the, in the Supreme Court. Dom level surcharge was challenged by the Just, Just One group. The Supreme Court, a panel of seven, unanimous, felt that Dom level was wrong. The Supreme Court is wrong? Is that what you want to say? The Supreme Court panel of seven felt that Dom, Dom level is not always right. And stop the, the creation of some corruption that doesn't exist. Why from that? This is my story. This is my song.